Cell. To sell. Yeah. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sell to Sell. My name is Heem, that's Nick. And today we're actually going to be doing a tech review on something called HoloLens. Yeah, so HoloLens is something that we have here on campus through something called Holo University. And we actually had the pleasure of getting a little previews, getting getting to work with it a little bit. And it's probably one of like the coolest, most addicting things I've ever used. And we don't... What well, we've seen, we I, we've barely seen like the tip, like you know, yeah. the tip of an iceberg. So, um, basically, this technology yeah. has the hardware at least, like the actual lens, was developed by Microsoft. So this is Microsoft's technology. Now, this they've kind of set up this technology as like a platform for other apps to develop in. So we used we used um, Hollow Anatomy. So Hollow Anatomy is an application that you can like download. Um, for free. For free. For on, free. The, on, most, the, on the Most app of the apps for HoloLens. HoloLens are free, which is super cool. Granted, Heem, how much is a, how much is one headset? One headset is like three thousand. Three thousand dollars. Around three thousand. How many do you think Case has? Maybe thirty of them. Case has Case has quite Case a few. about thirty of them. So, um, it's really cool. What one thing that's really cool about you know the use of HoloLens and the combination of the app application Holo Anatomy is that medical school students get to use it. They get um, you know, some privileges come in here. I think it's like, you know, one, every once in a while they have to come in and put the headset on, maybe learn a couple new things. Um, but there's also like fun interactive apps. So he and I were just looking before we started recording and we were like, we wonder yeah. what else is out there. So like they have like darts, basketball, like more video games. Like, yeah. And then also like it's, it's super cool because of the educational applications as well as, um, you know, the fun applications. And you know, Heem talked about the headset. This yeah. is a headset, but it's not like Oculus. Yeah, it's not it's like not, virtual It's not reality. virtual reality. It's, what is it called? It's like augmented. Augmented reality. It's augmented reality. So, like, you put it on, and it has, like, a visor. Yeah. And you can still see your all your surroundings, but you see, like, holograms popping up. Yeah. Everywhere. And, like, you can, like, go and interact with them, move them, make things bigger, smaller. You can, with some apps, you can, like, draw. And it's so much fun it's so intriguing like you could legitimately do it for hours like i got tired because i was i didn't get tired because i was wearing the headset or my eyes got tired i got tired because my legs were hurting from standing up so much and walking around that's funny yeah i awesome. mean it shows you how like amazing this thing is because you don't want to leave it and like it's not like a television screen in front of your eyes where you get a headache from it mm -hmm. i don't know we you spent like an hour at least completely in is submerged in it and like Let's say, for example, if let's say Nick was the teacher, okay, he was teaching and I was a student. Nick would say, all right, based on how many students there are, I'm going to put up three holograms. And I'll put the same holograms in these three different stations. Me as a student, I can say, all right, those two holograms have four or five students around them. This one has maybe me and my friend. So two of us can do our whole walk around of this thing that's in its own area. Nick as the teacher can change the slides, he can change what we're seeing, he can change how big it is, small it is, all the details of all the stuff. And if there's anything relevant, he can even put like slideshows behind the skeletons for diseases that like we want to focus on. Yeah, I think I think that like the educational opportunity for these that like this technology is unbelievable. And I've always been a big proponent of technology in classrooms and using technology to like further people's education because I am somebody who learns like hands on. Like if I have something new that I get to like play with, like I will learn that and pick it up so fast and fall in love with it. Like yeah. that's why like, you know, I just fell in love with like anatomy and like biology and yeah. like human sciences because, you know, my in high school, like I was we were able to have labs and we were pipetting and doing a bunch of different things and it was so much fun. And, you know, now that this augmented reality is becoming like an actual thing like 10 years ago this was a figment of everybody's imagination yeah or it's like epic. tony stark yeah if or, you see like marvel iron man him putting that's exactly what there. it is like when when iron man's like sitting in like his basement building stuff with jarvis and he's throwing things around and, like but he i remember one scene where like he like blows up like a map really big and like yeah. he walks through it yep. that's exactly what we're doing here maybe that's not to that scale and we don't have that type of you know ai advanced, yeah and that advanced of like technology but if, if you've seen Iron Man, that's the kind of thing that we're working with. And it's so, so cool. And I think that Hollow Anatomy is just like, you know, 
the of very the beginning, beginning. It's, it's the like, very beginning of how augmented reality is going to be used in classrooms and out of classrooms. I could see. Do you remember? Do you remember the technology Google Glass? Yeah. Yeah, so so my mom, so okay, so it was it was a proto they had it prototyped in like 2000 I thought this was like when was when was Frozen 15 when was Frozen 14, 15, huge 16. when like, was like the movie Frozen like really big like I might have been it might have been like 2011 2012 I was still in middle school Yeah yeah 12, and my 13. mom my mom worked was you know kind of working at her at the college she teaches at and her uh, her boss he was a big tech guy he got my mom into Apple which mm-hmm. is hilarious and uh, cuz now we all use Apple products yeah. because of her but he had the opportunity he like got his name drawn to get a prototype of Google Glass wow and my mom brought it home one day i remember she, I'm like, can I play? Like, I was so excited to play with it. I was like, this is gonna be so cool. This is the coolest thing ever. This, like, no one's ever gonna use phones. No one's. Gonna, it's gonna be like right here. Uh-huh. And I got to put it on, and like, all it was was like a frame of glasses, and then just a piece of glass right here, and like the swipe bar was here, and you did had like tap stuff, and it was almost like augmented reality, but like it was just like right here. Wait, was it like this? Kinda like how the visors are. Uh huh. Right. So the there was just like. If I take off my glasses, now I can't even see myself in the camera. If I take off my glasses, so imagine that it's like on the bridge of your nose and like over and it's on your ears and then just right here, just right in front of your eye, like just out of range where if you're looking forward, it'd be like out of focus. But so it, like, you don't if see you look, things everywhere. But like, correct. But if you look up towards the glass, you see all the information and you can like swipe it and change it. Ta- you would tap on it. I never know. I never... That's, Google's been ahead of their time with that kind of stuff. I've never... But, like, but I used it, and it was cool, and there was a ton of... There were a ton of bugs. But after I, my mom gave it back, like, I never heard about it again. Yeah. No one, like, no one used it. It didn't catch, you know, kind of like they expected to. And that's, like, the... I guess a big story, like, we can pivot towards, like, being entrepreneurs. Is like, sometimes you have, like, the coolest technology ever. And like it's just the wrong time. Like just the wrong Google time. was so ahead of its time. I'm sure if Google, if Google Glass was coming out now and had, you know, these super advanced iPhones and these super advanced Google Pixels and like how you could connect them, I think that Google Glass, like we'd walk around and we'd see probably every one in a hundred people just wearing Google Glass, like looking, like while they're waiting for the, like the bus or something, just like playing on it. Now, you know how. When phones came out, texting and driving was the unintended consequence people didn't see coming. Right. I feel like with Google Glasses, if you start augmenting things in reality, mm. you're making people step out of reality. You know, yeah. like they have to, like me and you, while just doing this, we ran into each other a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Like imagine people driving with glasses. They're looking something up on the internet, not even on their phones. Like now they have glasses, okay? That's dangerous. Yeah. Okay? I think it's different though because... Well, it's not different. I'm sure, and I'm sure Google thought of like those safety precautions, and there's probably like just like your like our cell phones now know when we're going past like going a certain distance at a certain speed limit, like mm-hmm. at a certain speed, mm-hmm. and you get the "Are you driving?" question, and you have uh, to like say, "No, I'm not driving." Like they know, like the technology knows. Yeah, I watched I watched a really cool video on AI this weekend. Um, it was like a report just like about what AI is, how it's changing, and like how it's gonna affect us. And um, it's crazy how, like the guy pointed out how much AI is around us already yeah. that we don't even realize. Cause like AI is only AI when it's brand new. When it's put into our lives, it's just seen as like normal. Mm-hmm. So like even when you type in our podcast name, Cells to Cell, and I'm sure when you get to Cells to, it probably auto fills Cell. Hmm. that's AI. Like, it already knows what you're doing from... It, it learned that, hey, you look this up every every Tuesday and Friday. <laughs> Thank you very much. And, um, you know, it's like, oh, okay, like, Tuesday and Friday, boom, they're going to look up cells to sell today. And, like, that type of AI, like, we don't even think about that. Like, our car... Co- like, I don't... Like, our cars... Hmm. A, like, AI, like, when I get into my car and my Bluetooth is already on and it just automatically connects, I don't have to manually go in and do it every time... You know, sometimes, like, at very specific times, like, if I'm, when I was working last summer in a job, 
I would pretty much have the same schedule to like drive, right? You want to get to work by 8.30, so right. maybe you leave at 8.15, whatever, depending on how close you are. I, my Apple Maps nowadays, when I put my phone out at certain times, I'll get a message saying, like a notification saying, are you headed to this place? Like it'll, it'll know like just based on the time of, and the day of the week, it's like you're probably going to go to work. No, every, every, Saturday, every Friday and Saturday at 3 o'clock, my phone would tell me how long it would take me to get to the Montgomery Boathouse where I valeted. Because I had oh to be there God. at 4 o'clock, and it would tell me at 3 o'clock, hey, it's a 25-minute drive. Hey, today it's a 15-minute drive. And, like, again, we just look at that like, oh, okay. And we don't think, like, dude, our phones are noticing what we're doing, where we're going, our location, all that kind of stuff. And that's absolutely wild to me. I, like, one thing that's cool is, like, I wear, like, an Apple Watch every day. And, like, when I work out, like, there's definitely AI in there, like, being, like, I've always wondered how. Yeah. I've always wondered how this is able to, like, read my heart rate. I know that that, there, that there's lasers mm-hmm. that shoot out of the bottom, but I'm always curious on how it's. It seems so accurate. It's yeah. it's so wild. It's so wild. AI and t- AI and technology and the combination of healthcare and entrepreneurship where it's going. I was chat GTPing last night for fun. <laughs> like, there's, op- like that open AI stuff is going to be incredible. Did you see the Bing? Yeah, I've tried using it. I'm on wait list. Some guy was using it and the AI told him that uh, the AI said that I love you and you should leave your wife. Whatever. I'm Isn't that crazy? <laughs> That's insane. Isn't that crazy? And you know what you know what Microsoft said? They said, we don't know why he said that. It's like, ooh. So AI is dangerous, man. AI, well, it can be if it's used in the wrong ways, but you know, if I if if you're in high school, do not use ChatGTP to write your English papers, please. I saw another thing on that too. I mean, they have precautions to like catch you and stuff nowadays. So. Mm, no, they don't. They don't. <laughs> no. Not yet. Have you once have you used ChatGTP? So you know, like on the right side, it has something called temperature. So if you mess with the temperature, so if you go lower the temperature, the AI is going to be less conservative. Really? So it's just going to be like, it's just going to give you like, if you're like, give me general knowledge, give me general knowledge on uh, the biotech industry and where it's headed. And it would surf the web and give you probably a paragraph. And if you did it again at the same temperature, it would be very similar. But if you turn the temperature up past like the normal threshold, it will be, um, it will be very explorative it will use new words and it sometimes it might not make sense all the way but like the ai is trying to make different responses so yeah that's insane all in all ai and hololens yeah so cool i mean if we want to bring back the topic of hololens what we were doing just earlier right before this video nick and i had opportunity to mess with the lens a little bit more and we came to this realization that like the things that I was doing, I was literally sticking my face inside of a skull. I was sticking mm-hmm. my face inside of a, an intestine. I was sticking my face inside of a heart. These are things you cannot do in a cadaver. Yeah. I was you say. can't look at certain organs. You can't do the things that I did right now. And it was just, like, mind-blowing because conceptually this, could, this, this transforms. One thing that I thought concepts. was really cool is that one of the models was, like, the right arm and, like, lungs. Mm-hmm. But the left lung had the outer lobes. Ooh, and yeah. the right lung was stripped of those outer lobes. So you got to see the inside. So you got to see like the bronchioles. Comparing. So you got to see comparisons of like, like you know, the classic bilateral comparison of, hey, this is what, you know, a full lung looks like, and this is if you strip off one, you know, one layer of tissue. Yeah. Boom! Like this is what the inside of it looks like, and that's so interesting. And you know, a lot I've I've talked to like, you know, med students who work with cadavers and. You know, M- you know, MSTP students here, and they say half the time you're in your cadaver life, you're just cutting away fat. Yeah. Like, that's all you're doing. Like, you barely and see. And it stinks. And, and it's It gross. stinks. And, like, not everybody gets, like, the same person. Like, somebody, you, your definition of normal might be slightly different than somebody else's cadaver. Like, yeah. but what's cool is, like, they combine cadavers. Like, you can go and, like, look at other people's to see, well, like, maybe... Maybe your cadaver has cirrhosis of the liver and it's all just, you know, disformed. But you can go see somebody else's liver who is healthy. So there's something Rick said today, by the way. Rick is somebody that works for Holly University. Um, He does a lot of the demos here. 
But today he mentioned something very interesting. So when you look at a cadaver, it has to be on top of a table. And if you think about logistically, you have to be a certain height yeah. to look down on a cadaver. Okay? Like you cut something open. If you're a shorter person, you won't see inside of it. You have to like, you know, be able to see, get a yeah. top-down view. This, though, you can be in a wheelchair. You can be any size of a person and manipulate the model to be so well laid out where you can just easily just read it, understand it. And it's just like, it's like leveling the entire field for any any yeah. any person, I no matter how, what they look like. I think it's cool that this is portable too. Yeah. Like say some schools miraculously got enough money to give each child, like each student a hollow lens to take home for like a night to study their anatomy. Right, and they give them like, you have to put a QR code on the floor to like get everything like yeah. everything like centered. But imagine you just go home in your living room and like you get to study anatomy for 45 minutes with the slides that you were given that night through hollow like through hollow anatomy. Like how cool like I think that there would be a waiting list for an anatomy class in high school. I know I would I know I would take that class in a heartbeat. So this technology is unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. So I'm really glad we got an opportunity to try this stuff out. Once again, we want to thank Interactive Commons, the people at Case Western that develop the software Hollow Anatomy. And we want to also thank Hollow University, the people who give demos to everybody here at Case, uh, for giving us the opportunity to come try out these lens. Yeah, and if you made it this far, we have something really cool coming out on Tuesday. So <laughs> stay stay tuned. It's, it's a lot of fun. So, all right, Heem, got anything else? No, that's all. All right, what a conversation about AI. Yeah. That was fun. I'm glad you took it that way. That was was interesting. Well, I mean, that was a cool pivot. So, anyways, (laughs) I'm going to say thank you guys for watching another episode of Sells to Sell. This has been uh, Nick. That's him. (laughs) See you guys on Tuesday. See ya.